and justice. Today we're going to be talking about pain management. It's a huge issue. Um, more and more Americans seem to be um, going on pain medication, but for some reason people don't seem to be getting adequate control. So we have um, an expert here who is going to be talking to us about this. Um, her name is Laura Meher. She works at the OHSU. And she is going to be talking to us. You're at the OHSU Pain Clinic, correct? Yes, I'm a nurse practitioner at the Comprehensive Pain Center. Yeah, and she knows all there is to know about uh, chronic pain. <laughs> and that's why she's here. We're very excited. Um, but first, we're going to be going to the video. We're going to have another um, game, uh, the body game. So, but today we'll be talking about, let's see, patella. Um, very interesting um, answers with regards to the patella. What do you think the patella is? I'll see you in a little bit. So now we're here with Chance, and uh, so Chance, I'm gonna ask you if you know the meaning of some words that are associated with the body or the names of body parts and see if you know what they mean. So the first one is patella. Do you know what a patella is? I do not think I do. Do you have a guess? A patella? Uh, I, I, I'm just so not sure. <laughs> it's below the waist. It's below the waist. Mm -hmm. And it's a bone. Patella. Is it something like lower than the knee? It's patella. Asking me. Patella? What about it? I don't, I don't know. Do you have a guess? Uh, no, no, not even. What is it? It's your kneecap. <laughs> yeah, you should have that. Like that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Learned that in school. Come on, second grade. Patella. Yes. Uh, the patella is the uh, disc in the front of the knee, I think. That is correct. Patella. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say it's a part of the inner ear. That's just a wild guess, but it's probably not. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Uh, do you have any other guesses? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's your kneecap. Uh, so. Not fair. <laughs> I, uh, the inner ear guess was good. I liked that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. To me, it sounds like a medical terminology would be your palate. You know? Yeah. So that, it's that, been, that, it's that, like that, oh, is it your kneecap? Okay, um, how about the patella? In kneecap? Yeah. I was going to say something around like arms or legs. Yeah. Like, it was one of the two. It was either below here or up, like down here. What do you think patella means? Tailbone. Is that your tailbone? <laughs> it, it, it does sound like a bone, doesn't it? Yeah, patella. Yeah, yeah it's actually your kneecap. Oh, I would have been... <laughs> what do you think a patella means? The patella is your kneecap. The word I'm going to ask you about is patella. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, we're not sure. It's, it's a new word altogether. Do you have a guess? Patella. And it's a part of the a body? Is it like the stomach? Can you give us a hint like uh, <laughs> is it towards our head or is it towards our... Is it an elbow? It's similar to an elbow. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so, um, is it the nose? No. <laughs> How is a nose similar to an elbow? <laughs> 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 Very nice. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, what did you think patella was before you saw that game? Um, <laughs> knee injuries cause a lot of pain. Patella is in your knee. And we have someone here who's going to be talking about pain control, Laura Meher from OHSU Pain Center. And now, so, pain can be seen across all nursing specialties, correct? 
Yes, absolutely. So um, share with the viewers, what's the nurse's role in assessing and treating pain? Okay. First, I'd like to say thanks so much for having me on your show. Oh. I think it's a great idea and I'm really glad you're trying to promote um, the nursing field. It's, a, it's very important. Thank so you. I, I appreciate the offer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really do think it's my mission to bust all me. Very <laughs> good. Very good. I'll help you with it anyway I can. Thank you. Um, when we look at pain control, uh, nurses are really the key player in uh, representing the patient. Um, they have an important job of assessing where their pain is, uh, taking a look at how they're responding to treatments, whether it be medication or, or therapies, and getting back to the team and letting other caregivers in the patient's uh, health care team understand whether treatments are working or not. And so the nurse has to be really skilled in being able to look beyond the uh, pain scale and look at uh, their body language, mm -hmm. look at their vital signs, um, take some time to figure out uh, where the pain source is coming from and whether the treatments are appropriate or not. Why is, pain, why is good pain control important? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I think a lot of people don't understand the importance of having good pain control from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, the body is a pretty amazing Thing. It is the and the brain remembers, believe it or not, <laughs> the brains remember um, pain episodes. So if a person has a painful experience and it's not managed well by any of the healthcare team or um, patients just aren't getting adequate care uh, in terms of pain management, mm -hmm. it makes a person's pain experience different at a future pain episode. So if someone has to have another surgery or they have a trauma or they have another health experience where they're having significant pain, mm -hmm. um, they remember that it was difficult and, and it's challenging to get the right amount of treatments going, the right okay. types of therapies mm -hmm. to uh, help a person get their pain under control. So um, you mentioned pain scale. So is that one of the ways we measure pain? There is a tool, a pain scale of 0 to 10, where okay. 0 is no pain, okay. and 10 is the worst pain imaginable for, imaginable for the person. Oh, okay. um, but it's not understood by all patients. Some cultures don't even have uh, words to describe pain. Some, some cultures don't uh, communicate it to family or healthcare providers, mm -hmm. so it can be a challenge. So we have to look beyond a pain scale in terms of trying to determine whether a person's comfortable or not. So what type of things have you done as a nurse on the floor to know whether your patient's uh, comfortable or, or what you have done for the patient has worked? I am a nice <laughs> nurse, so yes, we do Give assess pain quite frequently. Um, we use the pain scale 0 to 10, mm -hmm. and you're right. There are some patients that do not understand that scale mm -hmm. at all. So we do, we do have a face if we do have the face yeah. measurement and you can look if someone is a lot of people not everybody but most people when they are truly truly hurting on the scale of 8 to 10 mm -hmm. you're going to see they are grimacing or crying yes. yeah so we have this physiological signs right. to like you know increased heart rate right. because they are hurting Good um, examples. So, mm -hmm. They're good examples. And body language, for one. And body language. The patient's People holding. To, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we understand. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. Yeah. Uh, you have to also be able to evaluate their communication or their lack of ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine trying to work with someone that's deaf or blind right. or can't hear. Right. I mean, sorry, that, that's what deaf means. <laughs> um, maybe they uh, have trouble speaking or mm -hmm. maybe they have developmental delay or dementia. Uh, think of how That's challenging true. it is to work with someone that may not understand your questions right, right. and then how do you figure out it's so that important. that's why we have both the subjective and the objective uh, pain management yes so the subjective being what the patient is telling you right they are feeling an objective being what we can see and what we can assess with vital signs and yes. other tools, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and think about it, to be in the ICU, my patients, a lot of my patients tend to be intubated. They're not gonna tell me they're hurting. Right. I have to be able to figure out in other ways, you know. They may be restless or they may be sweaty. <laughs> exactly. Or they may close in. They exactly. may be 
very still and yeah, not yeah, even asking really questions exactly. when you're awake. Exactly. Exactly. The other part of good pain control is to mm -hmm. look beyond the patient. Right. Sometimes their family members are very aware Absolutely. of their pain responses. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, culture. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a person's perceptions. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond the physiology of That's what true. the pain is doing and the pathophysiology mm -hmm. to the person's their ability to handle fear or anger or um, those types of things when we when we have pain going on, mm -hmm. um, it's really important that the nurse also take that into consideration. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you just reminded me of something. Um, sometimes when I give the skill to patients who do understand it, um, zero to ten, what's your pain? Some cultures are very stoic, and the, and the yes. male members of those cultures do not. They feel they think it's a weakness yes. to express pain. Yes, absolutely. And when so, if when someone from this, the family usually helps a lot mm -hmm. in like helping us determine if they're hurting or not. Sure. And if you were not aware of this, and someone from that population right. tells you that they're fine, and or they say their pain is a two, and the family member comes up to you and says. If he's telling you a two, it's probably an, a ten in another person's scale. Sure. Because they are just so sorry. They never complain of pain. So we do take those things into consideration and stuff. Another thing we do mm -hmm. in our pain center, I work with four pain specialists that are physicians, mm -hmm. and we're training residents and fellows in their um, their goals to reach towards uh, their own practices. Mm -hmm. And we talk about it quite a bit. And one thing we're working on is to evaluate a person's functional ability. And what I mean by that is, if a person has had a major hip surgery right. in order to replace their hip, um, and you see the family comes to the visit with you and, and tells you that uh, you know, Mr. Bill is not up walking and he's not getting out of the house and he's not doing right, his own bath. Right. Well, their functional ability is a really good clue as to whether or not they're comfortable exactly. or they feel mobile or they feel that they can get up and move around and right. feel safe and, right. and do well. So we often monitor a person's ability to go to work or to drive or mm -hmm. take care of the house. Um, so Pain we ask affects about, everything you do, huh? Yes, we ask about all those things when we try to determine ways we can help people um, you have good pain control. So um, from your experience working with pain patients, what are the barriers that you've noticed um, to good pain control? Well, I think the medical field, uh, whether it be nursing or physicians or anyone in the, in the healthcare team, mm -hmm. um, pain is frequently undertreated. If you look at how um, patients respond when they go to the emergency room, mm -hmm. About 30 to 40 percent of the time, they may not receive pain medication at all. Okay. And that's often what's the drive is to get in to be evaluated is a pain, uh, something right. going on right. with pain. Uh, we also know that um, hmm. many providers in all levels, whether they be nurse practitioners or PAs or physicians, may not understand the wide variety of medications available to help patients pain problems and so they go to what's comfortable to them what they understand and that's the opioids yeah. so they they may not be addressing the problem with uh, other alternatives and not just medication we often try to um, help educate people that there are very important role of physical therapy and occupational therapy even massage and <laughs> We just really encourage people to explore all types of options for uh, taking better care of themselves, and that frequently goes a long way towards helping their helping them feel better, mm -hmm. helping their pain um, right. improve. A lot of patients with chronic pain probably feel very misunderstood. Um, yes, don't they? They do. They they get frustrated. They feel that they're often not heard. Mm -hmm. um, they get uh, discouraged, and so an imp another important aspect of our center and that we call it Comprehensive Pain Center because mm -hmm. in, in the facility we have physical therapy and occupational therapy. We have pain psychologists in our clinic and they're a key player on the team to help families and patients understand how do we cope with pain? How mm -hmm. does pain inter interact with our family relationships and our work relationships? Mm -hmm. how, uh, if people don't have coping skills, we help train them can they learn to meditate? Can they relax? Mm -hmm. um, can they find other ways to 
survive and get through and get through the day with chronic pain without relying on the medication cabinet. Right, right. You know, as you were just talking, patients feel misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So we are going to show a video of a young lady who's been suffering with chronic okay. pain. She looks pretty healthy on the outside, but she has fibromyalgia and that's mm -hmm. one source of chronic pain, correct? Sure. Yes, so we're going to be showing this video, and um, if we could cut to that, would be great. Welcome back at Uriel Nessus Health Show. I am your host, Anna Justice, and today we are talking to Laura Meher. She is a nurse practitioner at the OHSU Pain Clinic, and she's been talking about her training case with us. Um, wasn't that really sad about the video? It gives you a really good understanding of what patients uh, who go through chronic pain issues suffer through. Um, when you have an acute pain, you get some kind of treatment, it goes away. People are pretty happy with that. But with chronic pain, it's a constant. Mm -hmm. And people get tired of hearing about it or they just wish it away after a while. And people who are long sufferers of chronic pain um, really do experience what she was um, showing you because she didn't really talk <laughs> in the mm -hmm. video. Um, so given how important this issue is, how can we empower nurses um, to, to promote optimal pain management? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I want to bring up that OHSU has a pain day. Uh, once a year, we have a full day uh, dedicated to healthcare professionals and uh, at all levels. Um, there are several uh, residents, nursing students, mm -hmm. uh, all disciplines. They come from all over the Northwest to come and hear mm -hmm. the experts on the hill. It'll be April 11th. For pain day at OHSU, pain day. please um, feel free this to a monthly thing? sign up. It's free. Okay. It's one day a year. One day. And it's throughout the day. And mm -hmm. there are keynote speakers, and there are also uh, breakout sessions. But they're experts in uh, research of pain, mm -hmm. treatment of pain, uh, different modalities different types of specialists that are working with pain and okay. I really enjoy that day. So when you think about how can we empower nurses to do a better job mm -hmm. with pain management, mm -hmm. education is key at the top of the list. Uh, we work really hard to help nurses understand what are the medications they're giving, mm -hmm. how do they work, how do they interact, 
I mean, understand the patient's past medical history, so they need to be a detective, go through the chart and understand the patient's thing, uh, experiences that they've already tried. Okay. Uh, the other thing I encourage nurses to do, uh, one of your other guests mentioned it, mm -hmm. is best practices. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's coming up in healthcare that's really helping everyone come to the table. And what I mean by that is uh, when we did this in a former specialty I was in, we had physicians, physical therapists, nursing leaders, um, nurse practitioners, uh, and students meet on a monthly basis. And they would look through, everyone felt comfortable to come and talk about what's working in their job and what wasn't working. Yeah, and I encourage nurses in their job field, whether mm -hmm. it be the hospital, medical care homes, uh, clinics, mm -hmm. work with the staff uh, to work through problems of mm -hmm. advocating for patients, yeah. uh, for patients right. keeping their medical records accurate. Right. Uh, there's many ways that we can be a real strong advocate for patient safety. Mm -hmm. I feel that's important. And I think when I think about nurse empowerment, it comes down to uh, supporting nurses. So I hope nurse managers, I hope physicians, bosses <laughs> at, at all levels are willing to spend time to listen to nurses' issues, what their day is like, help support them with um, the stress of the job. It's, it's not an easy job, but I encourage people on a daily basis to think about nursing and to consider it as a career right. because there's just so many opportunities to get out and, and offer your skills to other people and it's very rewarding to. It's very much so. I'm glad you use fibromyalgia as mm -hmm. an example of a difficult chronic pain right. uh, because it really is a tough disease to to have mm -hmm. and it's a nurse's role I think to help them learn about it mm -hmm. and understand it. Mm -hmm. There are even professionals <laughs> and providers <laughs> in the community yeah. that tell their patients they don't believe it's a real disease. Yeah. Encourage people to learn about it and understand right, it. Right. There's new research all the time on pain conditions mm -hmm. and helping us understand what's happening. Right. So we are treating with the appropriate therapies and able to help people in a big way. So okay. non-pharmaceutical treatments of pain. Do you use any of those in your practice? Yes, pain management uh, really needs to be broad because the human body uh, is a pretty complicated organ mm -hmm. and I encourage patients to get nutritional evaluation. Okay. I encourage them to work on weight loss if that's part of their joint pain. Uh, we talk a lot about quitting smoking and eating a healthy diet. Uh, there are many ways that we can use non-pharmaceutical therapies to help people mm -hmm. and that's why our center offers um, a large percentage of our patients come and see our pain psychologist. Mm -hmm. They come and see physical therapy and occupational therapy. Oh, There's a real nice hot pool there for pool therapy for people that aren't able to walk and move much. They can do pool therapy and get nice. their pain improved by that. And, and this is the OHSU Pain Center? Down at the Center for Health and Healing. Okay. Um, you know, every, every day I learn something new from a patient as far as what helps them with their pain. Right. So they're, they're training me as much as the other way. <laughs> and when they feel that they have something to offer, mm -hmm. uh, then they really develop trust and, That's true. and the ability to, uh, they're more likely to follow your instructions, right. more likely That's to do so what true. you ask them to do. <laughs> it really takes the patient's buy-in. Building that trust is vital to education, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to ask you, um, since narcotic use is, you know, is something just like you mentioned, like in the ED, the doctors mm -hmm. would very easily or whoever the provider was mm -hmm. would, would go to the medication that they were most comfortable with. Yes. And invariably it is some kind of narcotic or opioid, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So um, I would assume that there's an issue with dependency when it comes to that. Um, how? How are you seeing that in your practice? So how does that affect the way you manage pain? Well, what we've discovered over the last couple of years mm -hmm. is that the deaths from illegal drug use, mm -hmm. such as heroin, cocaine, methamphetamines, mm -hmm. that death rate has actually dropped significantly. Oh, very good. The actual deaths now related to drug use are from prescription medications. Those curves in the graphs have crossed over. 
And right. so you think about opioid misuse or narcotic misuse, mm -hmm. those prescriptions are coming from somewhere. Right. Um, Someone has to be doing <laughs> Yes. yes. Right. So now uh, both the state of Washington and the state of Oregon mm -hmm. have developed some guidelines for prescribers. Mm -hmm. They have encouraged limits on amount of milligrams per day that patients should receive. Got it. Um, they are both states have monitoring programs mm -hmm. where I have a patient come in and I might suspect misuse. Okay. So some examples of that would be frequent calls to the clinic. My mm -hmm. dog ate my pills. Uh, my purse is stolen. Well, actually say that, like my dog did my homework. Next week my is my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is my jacket was stolen off the bus and it had my pain pills in it. Oh, Those types goodness. of things. Um, patients that might receive prescriptions from several different providers. Okay. Patients um, using other family members' pills is <laughs> illegal. Right. Um, people getting prescriptions from several different providers. Right. And Oregon State and Washington State have uh, websites where I can go and check while I'm visiting with a patient, step out of the room, I go and check by their name. Right. All of the prescription drugs they've received. As long received. as they're using their names. Correct, yeah. with under the name they give us. Right. Uh, and I get calls too from pharmacies mm -hmm. saying, do you understand this patient's received medications from right. four or five different prescribers? Oh. So it's getting more difficult to obtain them right. illicitly. Um, so there's... You know, I read somewhere, if I may interrupt sure. a minute. I read somewhere that Oregon actually is second only to the state of Colorado in terms of prescriptive mm -hmm. pain medication abuse. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? It is. I, mean, I don't have an explanation for that. But I do know that we're trying harder now to not start people on opioids unless mm -hmm. it's absolutely Necessary. indicated. Mm -hmm. And also, to we're helping many people that have been on high-dose opioids bring them down, and they find that they're actually functioning better. Right. They can think more clearly. Their digestion's better. Uh, they're not so sluggish. And oh, yeah, because those medications wouldn't make you constipated. And yes, yeah. they have a lot of side effects that right. are really... Uh, prevent people from functioning very well on a day-to-day -day basis. And they slow down your breathing, which is not good. <laughs> yes, that's right. And they don't mix well with other drugs, mm -mm. like alcohol, oh, alcohol. <laughs> or right. benzodiazepines, exactly. or tranquilizers, or antidepressants. I mean, there's a long list of medications mm -hmm. that, when you put them all together, it's quite dangerous. And right. so we're right. trying really hard to educate our patients, educate other that's providers so about how they prescribe things that don't mix well. Yeah. Um, we have patients come back on a regular basis to follow their care, right. make sure they're taking them as directed and understand mm -hmm. what they're for, right. and get people off them as soon as we can. Try to find other pain medicine besides opioids to so treat as a nurse pain. practitioner here in the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. you are able to prescribe um, narcotics like schedules and all this Correct. Is there restrictions? There's very few things that we're unable to prescribe. Okay. Um, we prescribe all the common morphine, oxycodone, <laughs> the fentanyl. Pretty much, <laughs> um, yeah. We're not, to we're not able to prescribe medical marijuana, which is fine. <laughs> um, it gets complicated. <laughs> but, but Oregon has been very the pioneer for nurse practitioners to mm -hmm. prescribe. We're one of the first states to really? allow it. And That's we good have, to know. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It has been so enlightening. Good, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so I really hope that um, you all were able to benefit from this discussion. Laura Mayher, you can find her at the Oregon um, Health and Sciences University. Yep. Pain Center. I'm sure she'll correct me. Comprehensive Pain Center. Comprehensive yeah. Pain Center. Thank you. Uh, we're on Facebook, Real Nurses Television, um, on YouTube, and we appreciate all your comments. Thank you, and see you next time. I'm Sonia Justice. Thanks for having me. Thank you.